Hey everybody, before we get to this video, give me a hot second to tell you about Carly. Carly isn't a person. Carly is an onboard diagnostic dongle that plugs into your car and connects to your phone and allows you to not only monitor the health of your vehicle using uh, onboard diagnostic tools that get fed to the app in your phone, but also you can customize your car in certain ways through Carly. For instance, if you have a BMW, you can upgrade the screen and the door chimes and the startup sound to sound like a Rolls Royce Phantom. You can program door chimes and blinkers and all different types of stuff in your car that you probably didn't even know you had control over. You can more easily perform your own services like oil service resets, battery registration, and more. There's a newly redesigned adapter. It works with all brands to empower as many owners as possible. Hit the link in the description to see how Carly can improve your car's experience. Good morning everybody and welcome to the Malibu Canyons. It's the middle of the day today. It's not exactly the time of day I like to shoot, but I was limited by availability. More importantly though, this is the RS6 Avant, you guys. This is really exciting. The 2020 RS6 Avant. Uh, for Audi's RS lineup for 2020, you're going to be able to get the sedan, the RS7, which is a fastback deal, or the Avant. There's no traditional sedan anymore. Uh, under the hood is a 4-liter twin-turbo V8 paired with a 48-volt mild hybrid system, making they won't exactly say as of November of 2019, but they would ballpark it at about 590 horsepower, 590 pound-feet of torque. That is, of course, going through uh, an all-wheel drive Quattro system with an Audi Sport differential, and for the first time ever, rear wheel steering. Very exciting. We need that rear wheel steering because the RS6 Avant weighs 4,600 pounds. Uh, it's heavy, although it is about the same weight as its main competitor, the E63S wagon. So let's go for a drive and see how it is. We're just gonna start with the launch control. They say zero to 60 in about three and a half seconds. So we're in Sport Plus, automatic, foot to the floor. Here we go. Big torque, automatic, quick shifts, very effective and pretty much drama free. Click it over to manual. We got the ZF 8 speed gearbox. Uh, it is updated for this year. Now they have a, a larger ZF 8 speed gearbox that can handle more torque. Uh, so you can romp on this thing nice and hard, it will take it, it has the capacity. Uh, like I said, 4,600 pounds is heavy, uh, and there's a couple of ways you can deal with that. Uh, I suspect all these performance models going, for, going forward are gonna have this all-wheel steer, which will improve your stability on the high-speed bends and improve your turning radius on the tighter stuff. Uh, I also think that it's interesting they offer you two suspension systems to deal with that weight. One, the standard suspension, which I'm actually driving in this gray car, is the adaptive air suspension. It's got about an inch and a half of height adjustment, and then it's also got your, your, uh, your, your stiffness settings as well. It has a distinct feel from the dynamic ride control suspension, which is a fixed height suspension that has an adaptive shock, a traditional adaptive shock uh, attached to it. I drove both cars this morning, and I find that uh, my preference, the best fitting uh, suspension setup for this car is the air suspension set to balance, which is the middle setting. Uh, this fixed suspension, also set to balance, was quite nice, but it just didn't give you that sort of beautiful float that this suspension gives you. Uh, when they're both set to their stiffest, their sportiest, 
I prefer the fixed ones because that very stiff air springy bounce becomes a little bit apparent when you uh, start going real quick in the, uh, in the stiffest mode. This truck, I believe, around this bend will be turning left and I will be turning right. In the meantime, let's talk about some other tech. Um, the, the goods are all here. This thing is about the same price as an RS7, so you're looking at about 130 grand-ish, right? Heated and cooled seats, radar cruise, this full LCD screen gauge cluster that's sort of variable and adjustable. There's a really neat uh, uh, screen you can pull up in here that will show you uh, in... I'm gonna go around, I got a point, there we go. Um, there's a really neat screen that shows you the temperatures of all your stuff. It's called the RS Monitor. And it shows you not just G-forces, but like your diff temperature, your engine coolant temperature, the engine oil temperature, the trans brake temperature. Very, very cool stuff. Uh, especially for, you know, warming up your car before going maybe out on a track day or, or before doing a bunch of hard launches, just so you know that you're good. I'm gonna throw you down a couple of the tighter roads real quick. over here and I want to show you how, that although it's 4,600 pounds it's actually we're gonna go it's actually reasonably agile with that four-wheel steer 22 inch wheels folks with uh, Pirelli P0 tires not my favorite they squeal a bit but they get the job done there, there you go. You don't have the terminal understeer issue that you have with older Audis. You can kind of flick huck it into a, uh, a bit of a, a four wheel kind of slide if you want to, um, which we're not doing on public roads right now. The brakes are exceptional. There are an optional set of ceramic brakes that we have on this car all the test cars have today. They are the same as the Urus brakes, which means 17.4 inch front rotors. Beasts, folks, super beasts. And uh, they work good. With those rotors, you also get, if you get the ceramic brakes, you get an increased top speed. It goes from 155 to 190. And the, all you gotta do for that is the brakes. This thing goes, folks. <laughs> it's fast. I mean, it's heavy, but it fa it's fast. Don't you worry about nothing, folks. All I see in front of me is beautiful, fresh, new tarmac. On the scale of isolation to invigoration, we could call it, uh, the BMW M5 would be at the left side of the isolation scale, very isolated. Driver is very distant from the car and the engine, and they, they want it that way. Uh, at the other end is the Mercedes, which is very hot roddy. You can make it do it all kinds of like barky and growly things uh, with your foot by sort of playing with how those clutches or are, are clutch packs are engaging with the gearbox, like when you're making a three-point turn. This is somewhere in the middle. It's more engaging than the BMW. Steering, feel, and all that is about on par with the Mercedes. It is not as angry and hot roddy as the Mercedes. The Mercedes is more hot roddy. This is a little more muted, um, a little more restrained, a little more stealth, uh, if you will. It's not as shouty and as barky. Um, but I think it's just as fun to drive as the Mercedes. I could use a little more volume. I always could. Um, that being said, these are Euro spec models. Maybe the US ones will be faster. Uh, excuse me, not faster, louder. <laughs> you like how I conflate faster and louder even though they actually have nothing to do with each other? How America of me. The balance is really good. I mean, is it a Cayman? No, it is not a Cayman. It's a big, heavy estate car with room in the front, room in the back, and a big-ass trunk. That being said, and I know I just said that being said twice in a row, but it has good balance. It's a ton of fun. It masks the weight. 
it hustles. It hustles hard. Hustles through this canyon. Notice how there aren't any houses here anymore? They burn down. When you hit the rev limiter in manual mode, it does not automatically upshift. Watch, ready? Then, yep. That's the rev limiter. Ooh, my brake temperature is coming up. If you put it in different modes, the regular comfort mode versus sport one versus sport two, um, the gearbox has distinctly different characteristics. In efficient mode, it's very slushy. In this uh, RS2 mode, it's really got some, oh, big rock. It's really got some engineered kick. It kicks it real hard. This is a great big corner here. Looking over our left shoulders. Oh, there's the, oh come on. If you hit the rev limiter, it then, there's then a little delay before you get the gear. Just a little. It's not, it's not ideal, but I'd really rather that than it upshifting, especially in these RS2 modes. So, you know how in the M cars and the Hyundai and all the cars now, what they've got is a uh, programmable button on the steering wheel. So you can go into the drive select, choose your steering weight from the variable weight steering, choose your diff performance, your ESC, choose all this stuff. And then you just have a three mode button here, click, 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 and then you go from normal to, you know, canyon sport to uh, racetrack sport, and it's just programmed however you want it to be. In quiet mode, man, this thing is quiet. Really silent, really insulated. Um, it, it, it can be just, you could drive it your whole, the whole time you had it, and your spouse or your kids would never know it's got 600 horsepower because you can hide it. It's just easy to, to hide that if you want it to be invisible and seamless. Which for this kind of money, I don't know why you would, but if you wanted to get away with something, uh, body and chassis wise, it's 80 millimeters wider than the standard A6. So you really get that extra stability. That's about three and a half inches in America units. Um, it is. It looks substantially wider, and it's really uh, fender flares done right. It's quite a beautiful uh, treatment that they've done with this thing. It's it's hot looking, man. Every angle I think is hot looking. They've given it some seriously fat, fat exhaust pipes. Um, they're like six inches across or something. It's it's pretty absurd. It actually does dance pretty good. And if I get into the ABS, it's not so bad either. I think, man, I, I might change the tires. I think maybe the Michelins might might be a little more where I want to be. But this thing doesn't disappoint. It's good. to tell you that it's a sports car that looks like a wagon and I don't think that's true it's not a sports car it doesn't have the light the, the, the weight it's it's too heavy but I think it exists in that sort of world of engaging uh, bond burners I think given its intended task it is probably very good at that task um, although we have we have the tight twisties of Malibu today, not the wide open uh, deserts of Nevada uh, like we've had uh, with other RS Audi uh, launches. But um, I have absolutely no doubts that from 100 to 190 miles an hour, this thing just gathers speed like nobody's business. Because the old RS7 did. Why would that be different? Underneath, this is pretty much the same as RS7. And even, in fact, outside, too. It's got the RS7 front bumper. Do you see that, that? Where the suspension really compressed right there? What I really like about the air suspension specifically, when you get that full compression, when it gets to the bump stop, 
it has a really soft bump stop. Like it's really, uh, it's a nice thing. It doesn't crash hard. It really, that last bit of bump stop is good. The, uh, when I drove this road on the dynamic suspension before, if you hit the bump stop, it hits it a little harder. Just stayed out of the rev limiter there. I'm like on the rev limiter. Obviously the, the tendency of this is gonna to be towards understeer, but you could make it slide if you wanted to. It's probably not the, the desired effect really if you're looking for a uh, a wagon. But <laughs> but I genuinely, and I'll end this video with this thought because we're getting to the end of the road. I genuinely don't know how you could look at the picture of the car and develop expectations from that photo. If you then go from that photo to driving it, unequivocally, you will not be disappointed. The car delivers. It brings the goods. It sits in between the BMW M5 and the Mercedes AMG in terms of riotous fun, but it's very, very pretty. It's very, very comfortable. It has all the gadgets and the goods you could ever want. Uh, in the chillest modes, it's a bit smoother and more buttery than the Mercedes, uh, while still being a little more engaging than the BMW. And there's just a lot to like. It's a six, it's, it's another 600 horsepower wagon in America, folks. You now have a choice of two 600 horsepower wagons in America. So there's a lot in this car. I hope I have covered all of it uh, to your satisfaction. I'm sure there are things I missed. Uh, go check out my written review at Road and & Track. And thank you all for watching and have a good day.